What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Man, the weather, right? The weather is so much better now. God, it's not 120 degrees out here. It's cloudy. It's like 78 degrees. This is the time of year that I love doing Copart walk-arounds. And we're here today with a brand new GoPro Hero 9 Black recording in 5K30. So if this footage doesn't all the living crap out of you, nothing will. We're gonna jump in this today with a pickup truck. Wow. No, I'm kidding. It is a GMC Denali though, guys. This is a fairly new truck. I honestly can't remember what the damage is. I'm gonna guess that it was rear-ended. It is a 16. Fairly new, 77,000 miles on the odometer. This side looks relatively good. Oh, but we have a wheel back there. We have a wheel back there, so something happened. Ah, we got a little damage right here. No? What's wrong? I don't... Why? <laughs> I don't know. You guys know as well as I do. If it, any, any GM product that says Denali on it is money. All right? It's money. So I'm going to guess maybe... This is undercarriage, huh? It's almost gotta be undercarriage, doesn't it? Surely they wouldn't total it out for a control arm or something crazy like that. Get up under there. I don't see anything wrong with it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is totaled. This is literally a total truck. Obviously something happened to the front. Oh, wow. Okay, she's nice. She's real nice. Looking at that Denali rim right there, I don't see any damage to it. Oh, this is confusing. Okay, the wheels are straight and so is the steering wheel. I, I keep thinking I'm gonna find something here that's gonna, hold on, maybe, maybe it's a flood, right? Let's. Okay, it does smell funky. It does smell funky, but it doesn't say that the loss was from, from a flood, at least not on the sticker. I bet it's gonna fire right up. No, no, no radio. Oh. Is it dead? Theft deterrent system service theft deterrent system ah so i'm betting that this whoa it just rolled i bet this was a uh, i bet this was a theft car let's try the other key and see if maybe the other key works there we go you got to use the other key gotcha all right it runs great look at this beauty we got the sunroof and everything, man. You got your wireless charging right here. I don't think this is a flood, guys. I really don't. I don't think this is a flood at all. The air conditioning just came on. It's working great. The important window works. Take a peek under the hood. It does sound like it's rattling a little bit. I'm not gonna close the door all the way. You guys know that's gotten me in trouble in the past. <laughs> oh, Bentley, I've recorded you before. Oh, it's nice to be back, guys. This is my first Copart walk around since I've returned from the Pacific Northwest. And it is good to be home. Oh, she runs like a top, guys. Like a top. What engine we got? The 5.3? Uh, yes, this is the 5.3. And she looks good, guys. I'm, I'm still kind of blown away, wondering what happened here. Uh, maybe, possibly, there is suspension damage here. Is That's going to be my guess. Uh, if you look at the gaps here, you can see how big of a gap we got, like a handful of gap over here. And we probably have half of a hand gap over there. So I'm going to guess something under there got tweaked. We come over here, let's take a peek. And this should be more even on this side. We've got uh, about four fingers of a gap here, and we got four fingers of a gap here. Yeah, so something on this passenger side has definitely been severely tweaked. 
we've got very little room here and we've got a lot here as you can see you can fit damn near your whole your whole hand in here so something's gotten tweaked under here probably the control arm but it could have been let's see if we can get you down in there could have been something over here too i don't know i don't see anything off the top of my head that's overly concerning we'll check it out when we see the footage though if you see something i didn't comment down below and tell me what you think this thing is doing here because to me it just doesn't look that bad this is nice shut it off guys and you know the routine let's move on to the next one next on my list a 2008 mercedes-benz c300 i'm not sure if this is a formatic or what but i'm thinking maybe this one has the same type of damage that denali has because i see a spare tire on the other side uh, 76,839 miles on the odometer. A few dings and dents. There's a nick and a ding right there. This is not a 4 I love these cars, guys. If you've never driven a C300... Oh, wow, okay, I see what it is. I didn't catch this at first. If you've never driven one of these with a 4 you got to, guys. I drove, them, uh, I drove one a year or so ago when I was up in Washington and Oregon, and it handled the mountains like a dream. So, again, I'm kind of surprised you would total it over a suspension issue back here. So, I'm not even sure my GoPro can get under there, guys. This is a tight, tight space. Yeah, I can't, uh, I don't think I can get the GoPro under here enough. Bear with me, guys. We may have to go sideways for a minute. If you see anything, feel free to call it out in the video. Because I'm thinking some kind of control arm damage or something, you know? That's one thing that you can't do with my good camera at the house. That really big one. You can't get into tight spaces like that. And with this camera, you can get a better view of what's going on under there. To give you an idea if it's, you know, something you're interested in or not. So, yeah, obviously damage to the rear back there. I'll have to check the video footage. But comment below if you saw something that caught your attention. This is one that I would love to have, although I don't really need it. You know, that brings me to uh, <laughs> something Lucky's Wheels and Deals said a while back. And he's absolutely right. You know, where dealers mess up is when they buy cars that they like. They buy cars that they want personally. The cars that you like and the cars that you want are probably not the cars they're going to sell and make you money. If you want to be a dealer, then you got to buy cars that sell. You know, and I'm telling you, as much as a lot of you hate uh, Chevrolet, General Motors, I'm not particularly fond of them myself at the moment, but uh, a lot of them sell. Same thing with the Fords, man. Uh, Hondas and Toyotas and Hyundais sell as well. But generally, that's not the kind of car you're going to be sitting there wanting to buy, you know, at auction. You want to have something that you want, and what you need to be thinking about is what your customers are going to want. Service A exceeded by five days. Oh no, the oil change is overdue by five days. Sounds like somebody took care of this then. I'm actually very interested in this one, guys. I will probably be bidding on this one. It's only at $750 right now. Uh, it's not gonna stay there, obviously. Goes backwards, goes forwards. It wouldn't be happy about driving, but you could absolutely drive this. You could absolutely drive this. Air conditioning is already cold. I can already feel it. I bet the important window works. Yes. Harman Kardon. Harman Kardon. Stereo system in the house. Man, it's got the panoramic roof too, guys. Look at this. Look at this. It's got that panoramic roof. That is beautiful right there. AMG wheels or rims. God, you know, I can't please anybody. If I say rims, I get yelled at and people say they're wheels. If I say wheels, people yell and say that they're rims. And I can never win. I think you're supposed to pull that one twice. Let me try that again. Some of these cars, man, you, you never know what they expect from you. Reach down there and where did it go? Hell, I lost it. Let's try that. Some of these cars have like a two pull 
No, this doesn't have that. All right. Just got to search for it. There we go. There she is. The hood struts are a little on the weak side. I'm curious what size engine this is. I know it's a C300, so that would make you think it's a 3.0 liter, but I didn't even know Mercedes had a 3 liter. I thought it was a 3.2 and a 3.5. So, hell, I don't even see. Yeah, 3.0 liter. Okay. Okay, Mercedes is staying true to their, their labels there. She runs great, guys. Runs great. I'm thinking this one right here would be a very easy fix. The only thing I'd be wondering about is if that wheel rim is in the trunk. So let's go and, uh, uh-oh, the trunk doesn't want to open. Oh, no, no. Okay, there we go. Oh, geez, Louise. There's some plastics. Oh my goodness. Wow. Dang, man. Hold on. I should say, dang, son. Oh, boy. That's rough, guys. That's, uh, yeah, that rim is not savable. Okay. Well, at least we have it. Ugh, it's probably worth something to somebody. Yeah, she's going to need a new wheel. Does it, does it auto close? No. No, not in a C class. Oh, it doesn't actually, doesn't want to close at all. There we go. Okay, well, hey, whatever. I'll, uh, that's something I'll do when I get home is I will double check the price on one of those wheels. Surely you can find one on eBay or something like that. Let's move on to the next one. Next, we got a 2020 Jeep Gladiator. This will be the first time I've actually looked at a Gladiator other than just walking past one before. I've never actually gotten up close and seen one. I didn't really, I'm not gonna lie, don't get mad Jeep fans or Gladiator fans. I just don't see the point of a Gladiator. It's a Jeep truck, so I don't get it. It's not a real truck, in my opinion. It's not a real truck. It's a very light duty truck. It's definitely an off-road four-wheel drive capable truck, but it's just, it's weird to me. And I know the Gladiator has been around since the beginning of time, but it's just my opinion. I, I don't care for it. 4,783 miles. This is sucks, man. This, this thing is literally brand new. My Jeep literally has half of the miles this one has. Golly, man. This is a nice one, too. Look at that rear window. I got to admit, I like that rear window right there. It's got like that little, that little sliding hole right there. They finally figured it out. They made the hole so small, you can't break it to get in. So if you want to get in, you ain't breaking that little window. You're going to have to break one of the side windows. She took a nasty, nasty front end hit, guys. I, I, I mean, this was rough. This was rough. I mean, it literally broke the entire wheel. Look, fractured it here, destroyed it back here. The springs are getting ready to pop out. The shocks are destroyed. I guarantee you the frame is twisted. I guarantee you the frame is twisted. Just, there's a lot of damage to this one, guys. And then it hit over here too, so I, I'm, I'm wondering, maybe it took an impact, the primary impact from the first side that started the whole thing, it threw it off course, and then it hit something else, like a wall or something, you know, on the other side. Uh, this is rough. This is rough. That, that probably hurt. Obviously, it's not going to drive, <laughs> but it is listed as a runner. Grumpy Old Bikers Club. Founding member. Well, shout out to you then. All right, so it really is a Jeep on the inside. It looks just like it looks like just like my Jeep. It's just got a bed on it. I don't know. I, I it's all right. You know, I'll tell you what. I don't know what the towing capabilities of this is. This is nice. I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually really starting to like this. I like these seats. Those seats are real nice. I like that touch screen that I don't have. Okay. Okay, it, it, it's decent. It's decent. Hold on, I wonder if remote start works on it. Obviously, I'm not going to bother with jump starting this one. I think it's dead. Yeah, she's dead. I'm not going to bother with a jump start. There's no reason. There's no reason. It's just a waste of time, honestly. And we ain't trying to do all that. Let's see if we can get this hood to. Uh, 
hood to release yet. Okay, 3.6. Huh. I, I w I'm not going to lie. I, I would consider this if I knew what the towing capabilities were of this truck, in air quotes, truck. Um, if this thing can actually pull, and I see it's got a, a nice trailer hitch, it's got the seven pin, and it looks like the four pin as well. Uh, if these things could tow, I would actually almost consider trading in my Ram and my Jeep on a Gladiator. It's still, I think it's still a weird looking truck, but it's something I think I, I could get used to. It'd grow on me, you know? It would grow on me. I could do it, but it's got to be able to pull its weight, man. It's got to be able to tow cars for me reliably. Let's move on to the next one. Next on my list, a 2020 Camaro. I thought it was a ZL1, guys. That's why it was on my list, although a little carnage uh, is good for the soul, I think. Kind of puts things into perspective. It reminds you not to drive like a dummy. At least that's how I feel about it. That's what it does for me. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes when I'm in the Hellcat, yeah, I drive like a fool. But I'll tell you what I don't do. I saw this today driving up here to Copart. I saw a yellow Camaro SS, as it would happen to, to be, uh, flying through I-35 in Oklahoma City, I-35 North. And it was literally zigzagging, cutting traffic off, just zigzagging in and out of traffic, cutting everybody off that he could, scooting into places he shouldn't be even trying to fit. And, and, and this right here, this is why you shouldn't do that. That's acting like a fool. Now, if, and I'm not saying that I do or I would, but if I were to decide to get on the highway and do 160 miles an hour in the Hellcat, I would never, ever do something like that in traffic. Never. Not ever. It would be a long, open, empty road. So that if I'm going to hurt somebody, I'm going to hurt my damn self because I'm a dummy and that's what I get. But I would never act that way in traffic risking other people's lives uh so that i can so i can it, it, whatever i i could rant on this forever guys i really could doesn't make sense i got i got i got plenty of sports cars i've had plenty of fast cars i got cars so much faster than a camaro ss it's insane the tesla would have knocked this thing's d in the dirt if you know what i'm saying and there's no reason for it there's just no reason to drive a camaro like you're some kind of you know I don't know. People get behind the wheel of a sports car like this and they think, I'm tougher than everybody. Dude, let me tell you something, man. In case you don't know, a sports car don't make you tough. A sports car does not make you tough. A sports car does not make you cool. The car is tough. The car is cool. But the person behind the wheel, you're still you, man. And you better remember that. You are still you. And let me tell you something. You drive like an idiot, uh, you can end up in this position right here. And it doesn't look like it was a very comfortable position to be in. This person right here got hit hard. Now, I wanna be very clear. I'm not blaming the driver of this car for the accident. I don't know. I'm not even gonna speculate on that. I don't know. I don't know what happened in this accident. Someone could have pulled out in front of him. He or she could have T-boned them, okay? I don't wanna make you think that I'm blaming this driver. I don't know what happened. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't be that presumptuous. I'm just using this car as an example that, you know, relates to what I saw on the highway earlier today when a Camaro driver was driving like an idiot in and out of traffic. So, uh, yeah, please don't don't think for a moment that I'm, I'm sitting here blaming this person because we have no idea what happened. All we do know is that this was a nasty wreck. This was really bad, guys. Really, really bad. Man, I mean, this this... The carnage down here is just insane. It is insane. I really thought that this was a ZL1. I really, really did. But then when I popped the hood, come on now. I got to be careful. I don't want to get cut on this. You know what I mean? I popped the hood and I see a, a lack of a supercharger. Uh, unless I'm just totally missing something and that supercharger is hiding somewhere that uh, that I don't see it. I look down there, I don't I don't see it guys. So yeah, and another thing, I don't see any Z01 badging on it anywhere. Nowhere. It definitely says SS, no key, it wouldn't start anyway. But what got me is these uh these tail lights being clear like this. I thought for sure I was like that looks like a Z01 tail light, but all it says is SS there guys. Still, 
it's a brand new Camaro brand new and she's done and you know what so am I let's move on to the next one last one on my list today is an O2 BMW 525i now I've shown this in a video once before I believe with monkey wrench Mike I'm very interested I've been trying to stay away from this car but I'm very interested in it because they just dropped the buy it now price to like three hundred and fifty dollars three hundred and fifty dollars this car has been sitting here since June all right so she's been sitting here a long time it's a non-runner the body I mean of course it's very dusty and dirty but the body looks good the wheels look decent I don't remember what the interior looks like let's have a quick peek at that oh the interior's good the interior's really good we don't know the miles it smells like BMW leather guys if you don't know what old school BMW leather smells like, you got to get you a whiff. You got you got to smell it, man. It's pretty it's pretty phenomenal. Man, it's a good smell. It's a good smell. Now, I suspect what's wrong with this car ah, has something to do with the fuel system. Take a whiff of that. I don't know. I was thinking maybe old rotten fuel because she will crank but she will not start it sounds like it tries so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and jump in here I know the battery's dead so we're gonna have to give it a jump um, there's no odometer so we don't know the mileage either so that's something to definitely take into consideration let's pop that hood let's put the key in for $350, I mean, there's more in this car in parts, you know what I mean, than $350. That's kind of insane. The interior is in pretty good condition for something this old. The tires are pretty average. The paint's obviously not great. I don't know how well you can see it, but uh, the paint looks like it's probably faded in some places. Taking a look under here, this is very typical of pretty much all BMWs leaking around here and well the oil field i expected the oil filter housing was going to be leaking too but it's not everything under here looks it actually looks pretty good it's definitely got oil all over the place valve covers leaking you can see oil all down there uh coolant that's another big one with this car they love overheating ask me how i know some of you may remember mine this one's got coolant in it though so you know what I say let's throw a let's throw a jump pack on it and let's listen to it crank over because this is one I may be willing to take a chance on and bring home for 350 bucks. All right, we got the Noco GB150 hooked up, so even though we know it's not going to start, I want you guys to listen to this and tell me what you think. It'll at least crank over. Let's hear, listen to this. Boy, she tr you hear that? It tries to start. It really, really does. Now the gas gauge is also sitting on empty, so that's something to consider as well. You hear that? It's like, it tries to start, man. I think it would run. I do. See, it fires up and then immediately dies. It could be, it could be a sensor. Yeah, as soon as it starts. Okay, now I remember what was wrong with this car. As soon as it fires up, it immediately dies. See that? She runs. That almost sounds like a theft deterrent issue or something to me. You guys have experienced this with one of these cars. Let me know. Yeah, yeah. It could be a weak fuel pump, maybe. Uh, I don't know. You know what I need to check? Let's check the, the, the important window. Something tells me this was a car. It was probably well cared for. No, that window works though. That window does not sound healthy, so I'm not going to mess with that. That window doesn't work and this one doesn't work. Okay, so we got several windows that don't work. Let's pop the trunk. See what she's got going on back there. Ooh, well, that's pretty nasty. Not gonna lie, that's pretty. That's pretty gross. 
I don't know guys this one may not be worth it but I figured we would take a look at it anyway comment below tell me what you think and if this is something that you would consider bidding on for $350 that's going to be it for this video, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to get out of here. I got more Copart walk-arounds to do for you guys, but do me a favor, comment below. Tell me what you think of the new GoPro Hero 9 Black, the 5K, which obviously YouTube I don't think even has a 5K, so we'll probably end up at 4K 30. But comment below. Tell me if you think the GoPro 9 was worth the investment. Uh, I'm hoping it is. I've never used it before. I didn't even bring a backup camera, so it's do or die. If this thing works, then great. If it doesn't, we don't have any Copart walk-arounds for the week. Big shout-out to Copart Yard number 18, 28, 29 Southeast 15th Street here in Oklahoma City. Big shout out to Copart Corporate Office as well for letting us come out here and do this. If you guys enjoyed the content, give the video a big thumbs up. If you don't, give it a big thumbs down. Drop your comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, Auto Auction Rebuilds. Until next time, stay safe out there, buddy. I will catch you all very soon in the next one.